Okay, hi, I'm Andrew McLaughlin from uh, Cisco Systems. I'm principal engineer for the service provider CTO group. And predominantly I'm working on open daylight, so we wanted to talk to you a bit about some of the thoughts we've had around open daylight and publish and subscribe, and can we kind of take not just network management, but kind of what we're calling network supplied data to a sort of a different level. So kind of agenda is pretty straightforward. We're going to make this Q&A at the end, and if you want to sort of step in and ask some questions during it, we want to make it interactive. So the key piece really is kind of what got us thinking about this, what new tools do we have, uh, what, you know, what, what's available for us now. So we're looking at the sort of classic problem of um, publish and subscribe, where today systems above networks, they all subscribe, and that's the issue. It's kind of a many-to-many -many structure. Um, We've got a lot of new tools. We've got some programmatic approaches. We've got a southbound area from Open Daylight where we can create our own plugins so we can directly start to solve some problems. Um, we've got a RESTConf interface above it, so it's much easier for web developers to uh, make use of that programmatic interface. And I think, quite important, we're trying to remove layers of, uh, of OSS and of systems, which we get that from a model-driven approach from Open Daylight. We get runtime generation of code, so we don't really need to create modules and create stanzas and templates to make it all work. And we get interact messaging kind of by default from Open Daylight via the message bus infrastructure. Uh, so really, we want to go faster. That's kind of, kind of the point of a programmatic approach. So today, as I say, we have many vertical systems and applications. They all speak to lots of network devices. It's a myriad of problems, everything from classic access list problems to silos of data. We need to try and look at getting away from that. So we'd like to move to sort of an open mediation layer, and open daylight helps us to, to get there. So that's great. So we have you know, a framework we didn't have yesterday, but really what else can we do with it? So we started thinking about the network management problem of SNMP, of syslog, and Really, how do we express data out of the network? Because today we have to go get it. Yes, we have traps, but predominantly we go poll. Um, we screen scrape, we you know, use syslog. We want to do a number of things. We want to get at big data. We want to consolidate access to that data so it's much more centralized. We want to use a programmatic approach to go and ask for that data. Uh, we want to be able to subscribe to that data. Um, and I think whilst we consolidate it, that actually allows us to expand the amount of people that can use it because it's no longer siloed. It's the usual sort of Linux box under the desk approach to network management or it's in an NMS owned by another group. Um, and so you're usually repeating that process. If you need interface statistics or fault statistics, your own system goes and gets them again. It's not, it's not really very sort of useful. And it's not really very web developer friendly because most of these protocols are network based. You need network knowledge to set them up. You need as I say, ACLs, and generally network access. So we'd like to try and move to a model that looks more like this. We have the network element at the bottom. We have a sort of open messaging layer. And then we have all of our subscribers. So we move from a many-to-many -to, -many to a one-to-many model. So we've given it a pet name. So the pet name is NSD, which is Network Supplied Data. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So we want to make use of a publishing agent, very lightweight publishing agent on you know, a router or a switch or some other device. We want to make changes from that agent into a data store, a data store which is, you know, is, able, to lift, sorry, is able to publish to subscribers. And we want to be able to set up those subscribers and the data that goes into the store via very simple RESCOMF APIs. So back to the programmatic approach. Unsure. OK, it's over there. So really, why do we want to drive all of this data into apps? Well, we're beginning to see that we need a much more sort of creative thinking approach to problem solving. Today, it's pinpoint solutions. We're, we're looking for a particular fault. We're looking for a particular event. And maybe we do something very sort of you know, cl closely defined on that. But we're seeing from service providers that these issues are, you know, they're, they're much broader than that. They're looking at external factors, they're looking at cross-network factors, and they want to solve other problems. 
And often the problems are business problems, they're knock problems, and it's, it's very multifaceted. And this works very well at a web level. If you can bring in different types of data in a common format, and you can start to glue them together and just demonstrating a very simple UI. So you could publish information into a UI or an application and make a myriad of decisions based on that that relate to your business. It's almost impossible to do that today with the tools we have because they're all siloed. Um, often these events are completely unrelated as well. So we need analytics tools. So we'd like to have analytics engines, give them access to the data store, and it's, you know, let's move to that sort of big data that everybody's been talking about for the last two or three years, but no one's been able to reach it. So it's a pretty simple model. We have events, we have event distribution, which is much more centralized and controlled, and then we feed those subscribed events to applications which have subscribed to them. So how would we do this in an open daylight architecture? So from the first pass, we need to actually make a subscription request from an application to the subscription manager. A subscription manager has a number of functions. Its first function really is to honor the request or reject the request. It's also to rationalize requests. We don't want to see the same request causing another action on the network. So we're, we're not going to take 200 devices and program an agent 200 times. We'll just say, we've done it once. Is it the same time period? Fine, we'll move you to the data store, and you've now subscribed to the data store. So from a programmatic point of view, the subscription manager will program that into the network just using a NetConf client that's already in open daylight. We get the models for things that we can program via Yang. So the network agent expresses itself as a Yang model. Those models are built via the MDSAL, and you get access to those APIs. That's runtime generation of code. Then the device agent is going to program the data store that's on the device, because obviously the device has its own data store, so we want to make use of that. And then subsequently, we can use that data store through the message bus of MDSAL, and you end up with a conceptual data store. So you have virtual data stores and namespaces in, inside of those data stores. The nice thing we get out of that is it's now the data store that's going to publish to the applications. But also, applications inside of Open Daylight can use the same data store. So there's no replication of information or function. So as I said, this was going to be a lightning talk. <laughs> and then they gave me half an hour. <laughs> So we wanted to move to Q&A quite quickly because my, my personal background is in working at a service provider and I recently joined Cisco. So I've had this problem for a very long time. Uh, it's the SNMP problem, it's the syslog problem, it's the that dude's over there with his Linux box problem and we really need to find a better way. So as we move to a programmatic approach and shrink the middle layers of orchestration, it seems to me anyway to make sense to look at it from the bottom up and say, Essentially, how can we get away from the many-to-many -many model we have today, the constant hitting of RPs, siloed in, silos of information, and, and really just no way of coming up with a big data model. So, I mean, key questions are, are going to be, you know, what protocols are we going to use for subscription? Is it easy? You know, does this negate SNMP and syslog? And we're not going to remove any of those protocols. This is an enhancement to those. You get to keep them or you can adopt something like this. Yes. Um, yeah, Andrew, quick question. So uh, the, the application would request to the subscription manager, now is that an NSD specific plugin? So the subscription manager would be a plugin uh, into the application environment right. inside of Open Daylight. Okay, very so that good. Would, we'd like that to you know, probably be an open source uh, contribution, yes. or it could be a vendor specific contribution. That's the lovely thing about the Open Daylight framework is it's either or. Right, right. And then the events or notifications coming uh, that were received or sent up by the device um, placed onto the message bus and then the app would want to subscribe to those particular events that it wants to see or notifications. Uh, what sort of uh, software might be needed in the app? Again, I guess, you know, I've been sort of, uh, you know, I have my binders on with, with REST. Do you, do you see like sort of a REST transport or? So I think. It, there's no real limit to it. I mean, you need something that's kind of semi-stateful. You want to make sure that there's guaranteed message you know, right. delivery. 
Um, it possibly rest. I mean, certainly rest. I think to make the call. Right. Um, today's implementation would be netconf, but that may be not the most developer friendly. So we'd anticipate there'd be translators. So XMPP is obviously a good candidate. Um, you know, or some enhancements to rest to make it you know more more publish and subscribe mechanism. Right. But out of the gate, you could use netconf notifications, um, which is at the end of the day is just XML. Yep. And um, or, or, or XMPP. Right. Or, or really, if you wanted to, if you're really obsessed with SNMP, and you know, just put it back in the SNMP format, but that's not really where we were going with this. But you know, with Open Daylight, you could write that plugin. If that really was your requirement, it, it's not going to be that hard to write an SNMPD that's going to do it. Right. Um, uh, frequency of these notifications or events, what, what do you envision in sort of the standard sort of service provider? type case, I mean, are, are, will, will an app see like a steady stream of notifications and alarms and that sort of thing? Yeah, so we've divided it into four message types. These are just logical divisions that, you know, we can kind of group things in and figure out how we distribute them. So we've, our sort of pet names are, you know, I messages, D messages, E messages, S messages. So I are infrastructure messages. So if, you know, let's say you're, you're a device. The first time you boot, you basically describe yourself and you publish it. So, you know, I am a 9K, I have the following cards, following software. If you wanted to, you could describe the following features. It's, it's just a description. Um, so some of those events would be, you know, very steady state, you know, a card comes in, card comes out kind of events. E-messages are probably the ones where you'd see more rapidity. Um, and am I still on? Yeah. Um, so today, yes. even if you look at syslog, you see rationalization of that. It doesn't send a thousand of the same event. It sends you a log to say there was a thousand of the same. So the agent would do that rationalization. And again, there's, there's no new technology there. We, we already do that. Um, so you definitely have a throttle there for you know, repeat alarms. Um, and that should be toggleable. We would describe that in a Yang model as well. So that would be completely configurable. Um, yeah, they, obviously, we'd have to look at scaling. but. Where we are today with SNMP, that's already not scaled. If you have 200 devices like some of the large carriers do, and you get that flash flood of events, RP's at 100%, it, it, it's, it's a problem today. Oh, can I filter down at the device, or do I have to wait till it gets up to the message bus? Um, so you filter, you get the option, actually. You can filter at the device and put in parameters and say, OK, if you get 1,000, just send me one. Um, on the data store side, uh, on top of that would be a level of filtration. So that, again, is configurable. The data store's modeled in Yang, so these are just attributes that you would configure when you set up both the data store and the subscriber as well. So that you'd, you'd be given a list of options just to tick box them, really. And I'm assuming we could create sort of an opaque uh, notification model that we could you know, stick anything in to you know, be transported up to the message bus. Yeah. It's, I mean, it is completely opaque because it is just, you know, it's something you can put into XML, something that can be modeled by Yang. Um, I've, been, I've sort of been talking to people on and off all week, but the example I keep giving is a washing machine example. There really is no reason why you can't describe a washing machine in Yang. As long as you can connect it to open daylight, it could just tell you spin speed is finished, machine is broken. It's just a message. It's not complex. So, yeah, it's completely opaque to the... And have you thought about any logic down on the device so that, you know, based on a certain threshold or a certain action or some installed policy might generate particular notifications? Um, yeah, we have. The, the device agent's extensible because it's built in Yang. So the sort of version one we're working on is um, just looking at, you know, syslog, SNMP, but also we want to be able to put, um, from a Cisco point of view, we have things like 1PK, is take the complexity out of the OSS and be able to program through 1PK. So if you want to get deeper or put in other sorts of filters and policies that exist on a specific router, we, again, it's Yang modeled, so you'd have the descriptions to do that and be able to do it via REST. Right, so do I need any uh, special, so if I'm a, a vendor and I got a NetConf server and I support Yang models and I support notifications, I could participate in this, um, this NSD architecture, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of ways to do it. One is that you uh, you, you build a you know bespoke agent, put it on your device. Uh, the other is that you build an agent that lives in the cloud that simply just you know goes and polls. It's just non-resident, and it takes moves you to that one-to-many model. I, there's no reason at all why you couldn't write an SNMPD plugin for the bottom of Open Daylight and say, okay, I'll still collect them via Open Daylight, but I'll rationalize them above that. It's it's kind of mix and match. Um, 
But on the device itself, so do, do I have NSD specific code or does what you showed earlier, you know, the, the device that has the NetConf server? And so you, have, you have NetConf server, you right. have NetConf notifications, yeah. that's, that's kind of you know, part of the server protocol. So we would build a specific agent for, you know, a router to do this. Gotcha. You'd gotcha. need some code to get from, you need some code to get from kind of the messaging system that exists on any device. Um, or, I mean, you can make it simple and simply use SNMPD, but I, you know, we can do that another way. I'd rather just, you know, skip that step and say, okay, let's get messages out of it. So yeah, you need a little bit of code on the device. Right, okay, thanks. Hey, thank you, Chris. This could be the shortest talk ever. <laughs> and I am losing my voice, so that might work. But do we have any other questions? Because we're just gonna keep this open and just, No, we can. Oh. I, I've always been that guy with the Linux box too, so. Yeah, 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 I'm that guy with the Linux box, you know, and my particular interest in is, you know, service provisioning. Uh, you know, today we do that through CLI scripts and this and that. It sounds like this might be a better way to go. I mean, if, if I understand the concept of this, to be able to do that, I essentially create a Yang model that describes my service instantiation, call that through the REST API, make calls from my OSS or whatever Yeah. Uh, using REST API, and then that's going to send NetConf and do the actual provisioning. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. In fact, we actually have an example of something similar. So there's, there's obviously some logical extensions to the thinking for this. One is... Yes, it would be nice to think about SNMP and syslog, but actually in the sort of network supply data model, you, there's a lot of stuff you could do. So we, we've got a, a demo uh, sort of example of provisioning. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. So we, we have the classic PCRF where you've got your service policies and you know, it's kind of defined where you know, your data center is and some resources. We tried to do is swipe out a layer of OSS where you have inventory and you you know you have that whole chain of provisioning. You know, there's the three weeks of trying to figure out which cable the things on the end of. Um, so part of the messaging format, one is an S message, which is a service message, um, and the demo for this is really simple, which is it's the classic sort of example. If you want to turn up a service from point A to point B, in this instance, we know where point B is. It's the end of an L2 connection for a data center and it's a multi-tenanted building, you've got your switch in there. So you just, at this point, we've got it to the stage where you can plug in a router and it will dynamically provision. And the way that's done is that you plug in the router, the first intelligent thing it hits along the road. So if you've got an access node and you're running ANCP or something, the first intelligent node, so say a 9K, rolls up those messages and just says, okay, I know the MAC address or the IP address of this thing. Um, I know which port it came in on, I know the VCID, CID, label, whatever it was. And it, has, it doesn't keep state on this, it just says, I know what it is, I'm going to send it as a message because that's what I've been told to do. So we have a little application that listens for those messages inside of Open Daylight and just hangs on to them for a while. So you then authenticate the device, choose your flavor, certificate, field tech, whatever. Um, the portal then says, well, found the IP address of this device, goes to the little I2SS, as we call it, applications. He says, yeah, I've got this, and I've got the port number, I've got everything you need. Then you can just literally stamp the service onto the network. PCRF has your you know, service contract, whatever the guy bought from you. And you just stamp that onto the network using RESTConf and uh, through Open Daylight NetConf provisioning. And you can just write a very small app to do that. So we've got a couple of app developers who don't know anything about networks to say, if we give you this message and some dude authenticates, can you make this work? And it works. So we have no inventory, no OSS, and the runtime code to actually provision the network, that's, there's no OSS for that either. It's developed at runtime by Open Daylight. So it's, it's an endless number of things I think you can do with messaging. The, the other example we sort of, sort of been working on is, so you provision everybody, they're all on a, 24 port card, three months later the card, you know, dies. Field tech goes in, pulls out the card, slams in the new one, looks roughly the same. 
24 ports. It's version two, completely different for QoS fabric. Everything works. You know, we, now, we see this example every day. I've, oh, I've got to stop doing that. I've always been a service provider, so I see this all the time. And it was amazing the card was in the cupboard. So, um, and you know, weeks go by, you've got custom faults, you've got no clue, so there's no, no indication. Well, we could just replace that. You get a notification, an iMessage to say, I've got a card change. You don't even have to tell them what the old card was. You just say, this thing happened. PCRF again could subscribe to those change messages. Um, and he says, oh, okay, I'll check that out. Oh, it is version two. I need to change the code on that card for those customers. He has the templates because he's a PCRF machine. So then, you, then an app developer can say, well, why don't I take that to another stage and say, well, a lot of these guys on here have a service contract, no outage until like you know quarter past two in the morning, and I give you a 15-minute window. Pull in your service contract. This is all app stuff. None of this is now network. So you can just build that endless list of workflows based on the fact you've got a, one message. So we really want to try and get to this sort of, we want to use programmatic approach with the network helping you out with what is pretty innocuous messages that you can do quite extraordinary things with. There's an endless amount of stuff you could do with that. And that's, that's kind of what we've been thinking about. And we want to try and implement some of this in Open Daylight. Sorry, very long answer to your question. I apologize. <laughs> So wait, uh, Andrew, the, the demo over there, I mean, I, the, I, got the, I got the part about notifications and, and <coughs> leveraging a message bus for that and app subscribing, but what you just described with respect to provisioning, so we're using these notifications to build inventory, right? Or do you have an accurate picture of that? And from there, we can uh, make the right decisions and take the right actions, um, you know, to provision a service. Is oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. and we, we have this concept of the LMR, which is the live master record, so there's no reason why. If you remember, there's no reason why you can't build your whole inventory on this basis and then right. it's a live inventory. Right. Um, it's, the statistic seems to be somewhere between 20-25% of all inventory for a telco that's more than 20 years old is out of date. Right, okay. So, and it's just a rolling number. Sure. So you could start to fix these problems. I mean, the network is the master record. It's real. Yep. You know, everything else isn't. Hey, uh, status of just ODL and messages and logging messages and logs and that sort of thing in general? So there's a message bus in Open Daylight right now. There's work beginning on the data store where we could store these messages and build a subscription system. There's some things I think we want to throw to the open source community. Um, the publish and subscribe piece or more the sort of subscription manager. Uh, that'll, that's something that you know, could do well in the open source environment. Um, so the, the, the status is, it's work in progress. We kind of got to this thinking after sort of a lot of rationalization of middle, middle layer with MD Sal. Uh, and we're looking to try and get something out of the door in sort of two to three months in beta, just as a, you can try it. And then people can use it as a web app and just on, develop on, stuff. On what platforms? Uh, we'll be looking at 9K or okay. sort of, you know, X, iOS XR. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. So I don't know how I'm doing. I've got five minutes, so I'm, I'm easy with questions. Does this sound crazy, or does this sound like something maybe we should do and open source it? All right, cool. Thank you. Oh yeah, there's, uh, there's the Open Daylight booth over there actually. So we, we have this demo, it's called I2SS. It's a working name, it's a terrible name. I named it, um, but it's just a working title. <laughs> cool. Thank you everybody, appreciate it, thank you.